Good evening. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good evening and welcome to the ceremonial swearing in for the Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander members of Congress and members of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus of the 118th Congress. My name is Amy Cho and I am a news reporter at News 4. I am so pleased to be your MC this evening and to be working with APACS again. I am a general assignment reporter, which means I cover breaking news, crime, healthcare, schools and everything in between. Uh, our station recently won an Emmy Award for the 30-minute special we produced on the rise in anti-Asian hate. However, my proudest accomplishment to date has been recently beating Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was actually just declared cancer-free a few weeks ago. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'm very excited to be here with you all tonight. Thank you so much for coming this evening as we celebrate the beginning of the new year. Please use the hashtag ApexWelcomes118 for your social media posts. And with those who are able, please stand as it is now my honor to introduce the members of Congress that represent our community in the 118th Congress in order of seniority. And please also remain standing for the presentation of colors and the national anthem. KPAC Chair, Congresswoman Judy Chu, California 28th District. KPAC First Vice Chair, Congresswoman Grace Meng, New York 6th District. KPAC Second Vice Chair, Congressman Mark Ticano, California 39th District. KPAC Freshman Representative, Congresswoman Jill Takuda, Hawaii 2nd District. Congressman Bobby Scott, Virginia, 3rd District. <laughs> Congressman Gregory Meeks, New York, 5th District. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, California, 12th District. <laughs> Congresswoman Doris Matsui, California, 7th District. Congressman Gregorio Kalili Camacho Sablon, Northern Mariana Islands at Large. <laughs> Congressman Ami Barra, California 6th District. <laughs> Congressman Ro Khanna, California 17th District. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, Washington, 7th District. <laughs> Congressman Andy Kim, New Jersey, 3rd District. <laughs> Congressman Shri Tanadar, Michigan, 13th District. Congressman Jim Moylan, Guam at large. All right, let's give them all another round of applause.
All right. Congressman Ted Lieu, apologies. <laughs> Congresswoman Maxine Waters. <laughs> and Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy. All right, now let's give them all one more round of applause. <laughs> All right, and please remain standing as the United States Coast Guard Honor Guard present the colors and Mr. Alan Palacios Chan sings the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the home of the brave. Thank you to the United States Coast Guard Honor Guard color team and Mr. Alan Palacios Chan. You may all now be seated. It is my pleasure to welcome APAC's President and CEO, Madeline Swan Tran Melka, to give welcoming remarks. Good evening, congressional members, 
distinguished guests, APEX board members, and friends. I'm Madeline Milka, President and CEO of APEX, the Asian Pacific American Institute for Congressional Studies. I'm honored to welcome you to our ceremonial swearing in for the Asian American and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander members and members of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus of the 118th Congress. This Congress continues to maintain an all-time high of 21 AA and NHPI members of Congress, and these elected leaders inspire the next generation of public servants and encourage us to participate in civic engagement. I applaud them for their work in continuing our representative democracy. I want to take a moment to recognize our MC for tonight's event, award-winning journalist Amy Cho, the military members who serve in the Color Guard, and the amazing musical talent of Alan Palacios Chan. We are also deeply honored. <laughs> We're also deeply honored to have Kieran Hahuja, Director of the Office of Personnel Management, and Undersecretary Don Cravens Jr. from the Department of Commerce, as well as additional key members of the administration in attendance. Providing statements of occasion tonight are House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, the first person of color ever to serve in this position, House Democratic Caucus Vice Chair Representative Ted Liu, the first AA and NHPI to be elected to the leadership of any political party, and House Assistant Democratic Leader Jim Clyburn. Lastly, we thank Judge Florence Y. Pan from the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit for administrating the ceremonial oath. This event would not be possible without our event partners, FedEx, McDonald's, Waymo, Comcast, Intuit, American Cancer Society, Novo Nordisk, AARP, Instacart, and Business Roundtable. We thank you for your continued support. APAC's mission to increase AA and NHPI representation at all levels of government would not be possible without the APAC staff and the partnership we have with KPAC and the AA and NHPI members of Congress. KPAC Executive Director Nisha Ramachandran and KPAC Chair Representative Judy Chu's team continue to be fierce advocates for APACs in our work, and I look forward to our continued partnership. Thank you for joining us for this incredibly significant event. We are so proud of the AA and NHPI community, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the ceremony. Thank you, Madeline, for your leadership and remarks. Next, I would like to recognize the House Minority Leader, the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries from the 8th District of New York, who has graciously provided a videotaped message. The Chairwoman Judy Chu, President Milka, Whip Clark, Chair Aguilar, Vice Chair Ted Liu, Leader Clyburn, distinguished members of the House Democratic Caucus, as well as, of course, to the KPAC family. Good evening. It's my honor and privilege to offer brief words of congratulations during this ceremonial swearing in. We made it through a difficult week to get to this moment unified and ready to get to work on behalf of the country as we commence the 118th Congress. I'm so thankful for the KPAC family and what you mean to House Democrats as a result of your brilliance, your strength, your resilience, your work ethic, your commitment, your heart and soul on behalf of the AAPI community and all Americans. I'm thankful for your commitment to making sure that we can bring the great American dream to life for the AAPI community throughout America and for every community across this great land. I also want to express my appreciation to Chairwoman Judy Chu and to the entire KPAC family of members for your extraordinary work and advocacy in pushing back against the rise of anti-Asian hatred that we have seen over the last few years. I will continue to stand with you in making sure we aggressively confront, call out, and stamp out anti-Asian hate and those who continue to fan the flames of xenophobia in America. 
An attack on your community is an attack on all of us, and we will continue to stand with you in that regard. Thank you for your extraordinary leadership. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your support. God bless each and every one of you. Congratulations. And together, I'm convinced that here in America, the best is yet to come. Thank you so much to Congressman Jeffries for his remarks. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the Democratic Caucus Vice Chair, Ted Lieu, representing the 36th District of California. Good evening. I want to thank Madeline for her leadership of APEX and all of you uh, for being here for our ceremonial swearing in. There is good news and there is bad news about the Asian American community. I'm gonna to talk to you about the bad news first, and then I'm gonna give you the good news. As all of you know, there has been a rise in hate crimes against the Asian American, Pacific Islander, and Native Hawaiian communities, 339% according to one report. And for those of us in the Asian American community, that should not be a surprise. Mm -hmm. America is an exceptional country, the best in the world, but we have had problems with race, including discrimination against Asians. We had the whole yellow peril hysteria, followed by the Chinese Exclusion Act, the massacre of Chinese immigrants in Los Angeles, the Japanese American internment, the murder of Vincent Chen, and then these hate crimes uh, after this pandemic. The good news is there's a difference. We fought back. Every member on this stage in the 117th Congress, under the leadership of Judy Chu and Grace Meng, passed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act to address this very problem. At the same time, we had outside groups, APEX and other organizations, track hate crimes, condemn hate crimes, and speak out against hate crimes. And what you're seeing is a reaction that we didn't really have uh, for much of American history, and that's because we now do have enough Asian American elected officials at all levels of government to be able to fight back. Another piece of good news is, according to the US Census, the Asian American population is the largest growing ethnic group in America for two straight census reports. The AAPI population has more than doubled since 2000, and we're growing not only in states like California and New York, but also presidential swing states like Nevada and Georgia. And according to a Pew Research report, Asian Americans will become the largest immigrant group in America by 2055. So now is an exciting time to be part of the community. I'm so honored to be here with all the amazing members of KPAC. And I look forward, and all of us here look forward to working with you to make America an even better place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Thank you so much, Congressman Liu, for your remarks. Now the ceremonial oath of office will be administered by Judge Florence Pan. Judge Pan was appointed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia on September 8, 2022. Prior to joining the Court of Appeals, Judge Pan served as a U.S. District Judge for D.C. from September 2021 until her appointment to the D.C. Circuit. Judge Pan also served as an Associate Judge of D.C. Superior Court for 12 years and as an Assistant U.S. Attorney in D.C. for 10 years. Before joining the U.S. Attorney's Office, she worked at the U.S. Department of the Treasury as a Senior Advisor to the Undersecretary for Domestic Finance and at the U.S. Department of Justice, first as a Bristow Fellow in the Office of the Solicitor General and then as an attorney in the appellate section of the criminal division. She served as a law clerk to the Honorable Michael Mukasey, United States District Court for the Southern District of New York, and to the Honorable Ralph Winter, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Judge Pan received two undergraduate degrees, summa cum laude from the University of Pennsylvania, and her law degree with distinction from Stanford Law School. Please welcome Judge Pan. Good evening. 
Um, it's an honor to be here to administer the ceremonial oath of office to these distinguished members of the 118th Congress. And it's inspiring for me to see the diversity of backgrounds and viewpoints that this caucus represents. Thank you so much for your service to our nation. At this time, I'm gonna ask the members to please stand and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully Discharge the, duties discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations once again. Will the member members please remain standing for the first official photo? And for members of the audience, if we could ask while the official photos are being taken that you please do not take your own photos, we will give you a few moments after the official photos are done. All right, and would the members please be seated for another official photo. Oh. <laughs> And if you're not tired yet, we will now give you in the audience a few moments to take photos. Uh, we ask that you please do not enter the well area and a reminder to use the hashtag ApexWelcomes118 to post your photos. So if you'd like to take a moment. <laughs> Okay, I think you can relax your faces now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> now it is an honor and pleasure to welcome Apex board member and the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus Chair, Congresswoman Judy Chu, representing the 28th District of California to give her remarks. Well, how wonderful it is to see this great turnout for today's, for tonight's ceremonial swearing in to welcome the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander members of the 118th Congress. I want to thank the Asian Pacific Institute for Congressional Studies, or APEX, for their vision and tireless work to make this event a reality. APEX first hosted this event in 2019, 
And after virtual version in 2021, I'm so glad that we are actually back together in person to celebrate this week as we kick off a new Congress. So thank you to APAC's fearless leader, Madeline Milka, and the entire APAC's team for all your work, not only in putting this event together, but for everything you do to grow our AANHPI public service pipeline. And I wanna say how special it is to have Judge Florence Pan swear us in. She is the first Asian American woman to be appointed to the all important DC Circuit Court. And that is the court from which many US Supreme Court justices arise. Yes, uh, we have great things in mind for her. As chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific Caucus, or what we call KPAC, I'm thrilled that we have 21 AANHPI members in the 118th Congress and over 70 members of KPAC. We have 23 executive members, including our own Maisie Hirono and Tammy Duckworth, who serve in the US Senate. And we are thrilled about another magnificent achievement. You just heard from him. Congress member Ted Liu from California did a magnificent thing this past few months. And that is he got elected for the very first time. We had not had an Asian American elected to the Democratic caucus leadership. For the first time we have one, he is now vice chair of the House Democratic Caucus. And it gets, it, it, what it means is that he can climb to even higher heights, uh, and who knows what is in the future, but we have high hopes for him too. And we have other incredible leaders amongst our caucus. KPAC's second vice chair is uh, Congress member Mark Takano from California, and Congress member Bobby Scott from Virginia are leading powerful congressional committees, the Veterans Affairs Committee for Mark and the uh, Education and Labor Committee for Bobby Scott. That is very powerful. So please stand, Mark and Bobby Scott. <laughs> Not only that, we have KPAC members who are chairing prominent caucuses in Congress, including Congress member Pramila Jayapal from Washington, who is chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, and Congress member Mark Takano, who is our first Gaijin <laughs> as co-chair of the LGBT Equality Caucus. So Pramila and Mark, please stand. And I am ultra pleased to welcome our newly elected AAPI members of the House who are with us today. We have Jill Takuda from Hawaii who will be serving in KPAC's leadership as our freshman representative. And we also have Sri Tanadar from Michigan, an immigrant from India who previously served in the Michigan State Legislature. Jill and Sri, please stand. We in KPAC are so proud to have members who are not AAPI, but who are very active in our caucus and support us greatly. And they are strong allies to the AAPI community who serve on both our executive and associate board. And that includes Congress member Barbara Lee from California, who is actually our long-serving KPAC Health Task Force co-chair, but also a member of leadership as co-chair of the Democratic Steering and Policy Committee. Please stand, Barbara. <laughs> and I just want to say we have our new leadership, we have leader Hakeem Jeffries, Democratic Whip, Catherine Clark, and House Democratic Caucus Chair Pete Aguilar. And guess what? 
All three have been longtime KPAC members, so we thank them for that. Now, I am so proud that so many of our KPAC members are here today, uh, and it is a momentous occasion. When KPAC was first founded nearly 30 years ago under the leadership of late Secretary Norman Mineta, there were only a handful of AAPI members of Congress. In fact, Norm often joked that there were so few of them that they would hold their caucus meetings in a phone booth. But we can see from what is here today that is certainly no longer the case. I'm proud to lead this caucus where we've leveraged our community's power on Capitol Hill to do just that, advocate for the needs of AANHPIs across the country. As we look to the start of another Congress, I do want to briefly recap some of KPAC's major accomplishments in the last Congress, the 117th Congress, thanks to the work of our members. To address the scourge of anti-Asian hate that impacted AAPIs nationwide, we not only passed Grace Meng's COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act and her AAPI Museum Study Bill, but got them both signed into law by President Biden. And we thank you, incredible Grace Meng. Please stand for doing that. <laughs> We push back against the racial profiling of Chinese scientists and end it, the China Initiative, a Trump-era Department of Justice program that was targeting Chinese researchers. To ensure that our AAPI small businesses across the country have the support they need for success, we codified the Minority Business Development Agency in the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. We successfully fought to remove harmful anti-Asian provisions in the Chips and Science Act to ensure that bolstering our nation's competitiveness would not come at the expense of the civil rights of Asian Americans. Our members have championed issues that affect all of our communities from health equity and immigration to voting rights, education, and so much more. But KPAC was only able to win these different issues for our communities across the nation because we have a seat at the table in Congress where those decisions are being made. And that comes from the consistent engagement of all of you who are joining us tonight and from organizations like APEX. These historic achievements are what we are here to celebrate tonight, but they would not have been possible without so many trailblazers in our community, like Norman Mineta, Daniel Inoy, Patsy Mink, Spark Matsunaga, Daniel Akaka, Bob Matsui, Robert Underwood, and Mike Honda, who helped to build the strong foundation for AAPIs in Congress. And in fact, some other thing I'm very, very proud of is that this past year, we pushed for a portrait of Patsy Mink, uh, who championed Title IX to be commissioned, and we were stuck until Speaker Pelosi came along and strong-armed her way into getting that portrait done, which is so beautiful. But right now, uh, it hangs in the hall of the Capitol, and little girls can walk by that hallway every day to see that an Asian American can become an incredible Congresswoman for the United States of America. How about that? We stand on uh, the, uh, we stand behind incredible giants like Bob Matsui, Spark Matsunaga, Normanetta, and Daniel Inoy, who passed the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, which granted reparations to Japanese Americans who were wrongfully incarcerated during World War II. And we stand behind the accomplishments of Robert Underwood, who championed the creation of the Anna Pizzi program to increase opportunities for AANHPIs in higher education. These individuals use their power to create a better, more inclusive America than the one they grew up in. They showed great courage in the face of adversity and refused to let hate and injustice triumph over progress. And it's that powerful history of strength and resilience that we must remember 
today. So as we celebrate the progress that we've made for AA and HPI communities here in Congress, let us also recommit to the challenges ahead and tackling them. In the 118th Congress, KPAC will fight to eradicate hate and continue to speak out against injustice whenever it occurs. We will continue to speak out against anti-Asian hate and push back on those in our midst who seek to divide us through xenophobic rhetoric. We will continue to fight for immigrant families, small business owners, and every part of our diverse AA and HPI community. You can count on us to be a strong voice for all of our community in Congress as we work together to build a brighter future for all Americans. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Let's hear it one more time. And I would also like to take a moment to thank Congressman Daniel Goldman, New York 10th District, for his attendance. As well as Congressman Lou Correa, California 46th District. All right, and I know your faces are still hurting, but we're going to take one more round of pictures with Judge Florence Pan. All right, thank you so much. You may be seated. <laughs> and now I would like to welcome back to the stage Apex President Madeline Swantran Milka. Thank you, Amy. And thank you again to Chairwoman Chu for your remarks. We'd like to thank our event partners, the APEX Board of Directors, the many volunteers, and the incredible APEX staff. Let's give a round of applause to our amazing MC this evening, Amy Cho. I'd like to invite the congressional members to exit the, uh, the stage, if, if the staff here can help me with that, please. And I'd like to ask the audience to please remain in your seats while the congressional members exit. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us tonight for this ceremonial swearing in. I'd like to invite you to exit to the rear and join us for the reception. The members will join you shortly. Please remember if you are leaving the auditorium to, to bring all of your items with you because you will not be allowed back into the auditorium. And please uh, wish the best for the 118th Congress. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you.